In this video, we're going to continue compositing different elements in the Action 3D compositing tool to use as the background for our end composite. I want to first talk about some of the controls you have over the actual images that you bring into the Action tool. If I double click on image 3, you'll notice that the editing panel changes to give me the parameters relevant to that image. That's why we see over here on the right hand side, it reads image three on the tab, but also notice that we have access to axis three. That's because these are connected. Since I'm looking at the controls for that image and this axis is connected to it, it's going to offer both the parameters for the image and the axis at once. And of course you can rename any element inside the action tool. So I have image three here selected and you'll see here in this field where it reads object, it reads image three. I can easily just come in here and name this to be clouds. Now you'll notice that the image has changed to be clouds in the schematic also. If I select the axis, now that is available to me to be renamed. So I'll just do an underscore in clouds to rename this axis. The tab for the image reads clouds and the tab for the axis reads axis clouds. Going back over to the image controls, we have our surface panel. And the first thing you have is the option as to what blend mode you want to use. We looked at this when we looked at the comp node. I'll leave it set to flame. And then we have a flyout with all the different possible blend modes you can choose. You also have a transparency setting. Well, you know, this image that we're working on right now, we're experimenting with, is the bottom of the hierarchy. It's the lowest image. So I'd like to just look at that image in the viewport. And there's a couple different ways of doing that. If I come down where it reads action menu, I can click solo and now you'll notice whatever image I have selected will be displayed inside the viewport and the other images will not be displayed. Let me turn solo off just to show you another way of doing it. You can hide different elements with inside the action scene so that they're not visible and have other things visible. If I reach and select while holding the control key, these other two images and hit the H key, you see that each one of the images now reads hidden, including its axis, and in the viewport, we only see the clouds image. I'll select that image once again, and as I was saying, we have our transparency settings. You can change the transparency of your image. Moving over under surface, you'll see it reads type. By default, it's going to be flat because it's a flat image that we brought in. If I click on it and hold out the flyout, we get bilinear, perspective, and extended by cubics. If I choose extended by cubics, I can now come into the viewport, grab a control point, and actually start manipulating this layer in 3D space, even though it was originally a flat image. Taking it even further, if I went to the vertices tab, once I've switched this to extended by cubics, and I choose subdivide, I can start to subdivide the actual image and model it if need be. This is not what we're going to be doing, but I just wanted to show it to you because it is a very powerful part of working in the action tool with your images. I'll go back to surface and I'll set this back to being flat. With the image selected, you see the manipulator centered onto the image. With the select tool, I can come over here and start to manipulate the position of this in X, Y, and Z. Any adjustment you make with your manipulator is obviously going to update the position settings for this axis. I can alter the X, the Y, and the Z all right from here. And because we are in 3D space, we can rotate this using our rotation, our scale settings, and so on. I'll hold Control and click in each one of those fields to set them back to their default setting of zero. If we look at the tools flyout now, since we're in the action tool, we see a whole nother set of tools that we did not see before. We do see some of the tools that we accessed when we were inside of our GMAS tracer. Above that, you see several different tools relevant to controlling your objects in your scene. Then there's a whole series of tools relevant to your camera. And then there's some relationship tools such as the light link, the GMAS link, and so on. Going back to our transformation tools, you'll see there's translate, center, rotate, and scale. These are very common tools used in 3D applications for manipulating the objects in your 3D scene. And there are hotkeys to access each one of them. If I hit the T key, you'll notice that I switched to the translate tool. And this is very similar to using the select tool with the default manipulator for the axis. If I hit the R key, I get the rotate tool. So now I can come in and rotate this on individual axes, or if I bring my cursor into the center, I can rotate this on all three axes at one time. The E key 
is my scale tool. So now I can start to scale independent axes or I can scale multiple axes at one time by clicking and dragging on one of the patches. So you can start to manipulate your image by using the R key for rotate, the E key for scale, the T key for translate. I also want to point out a button right down here under this viewport that reads world. We are manipulating this in world space right now. If I hold the flyout and I click object, you'll notice that the manipulator just changed position because now I'm going to be translating this based on the object's position. If I go back to rotate and I start rotating this like so, I'm not rotating this by world space, I'm rotating it by the object space. You also have the object of camera. So now you can rotate this based on the position of the camera. I'll set this back to be world, select my axis, and I'll click the reset button in the lower right corner to reset all of the parameters that I was just adjusting back to their default setting. All right, let's unhide these other images. So control, click and drag to reach and select them, hit the H key, and now they are unhidden. Just a couple points about selecting really quickly in the schematic for action. If I grab the axis, I can move it around. If I hold the option key, and grab the axis is going to manipulate the parent relationship, the hierarchy relationship of the nodes that are connected. As you saw a second ago, I can region select nodes. And then if you want to deselect everything, you can just click down anywhere in the empty area of a schematic and that will deselect everything. Or if I select a node and hold the control key, I can add to my selection and also click again to deselect something while holding the control key. We're going to end this video right here, but in the next video, we're going to start positioning our elements, our layers in 3D space to create the background for our final comp.